Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Opsiva's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Opsiva is a biopharmaceutical company focused on women's reproductive health and their pregnancy. The company is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland and was founded in 2012. It's focused on providing therapeutic solutions for women ages 15 to 49 who suffer from reproductive health conditions that affect their quality of life, ability to conceive, or pregnancy complications, and the health of newborns. It's currently developing drugs for the treatment of pain associated with endometriosis and heavy menstrual bleeding. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 201 million market cap, they're trading at 274 a share and they have 73 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see they have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. And the company is pre-revenue, so they have not generated any revenue. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is their operating expenses. And the difference between those two numbers is their operating income, which of course is negative every year. Below that is their interest income. Then below that is their interest expense. So they have 3.9 million of interest they pay in their debt. Below that is their pre-tax income, then their taxes and they have negative net income every year since they're pre-revenue. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then below is your capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow and they have negative free cash flow each year. So they're mainly funding their business with capital stock. They issued 156 million in 2017, 98 million in 2018, 3 million in 2019, and 37 million in 2020. When a company issues capital stock, this increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. They also issue some debt. They issued 24 million in 2019. Let's look at the capital structure. $8 million of equity, $27 million of debt. They're 24% equity, 76% debt. Their net debt is negative four million. So they could pay down all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $4 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 8.7%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated seven years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year seven. That's 1.1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $600 million. We divide that by 73 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 818. They're trading at 274, so they're trading at a 67% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. In the past three months, two analysts priced this stock. The low was 17, the high was 28. So they're much higher than my valuation. It is really hard to value a company that's pre-revenue. So I had to try to estimate their future free cash flows by estimating their future revenue and future expenses. I did that by looking through their financial statements and looking at their competitive financials. But as you know, the stock price is really based off of supply and demand of the market. If the investment community thinks this company has a great future, they can push a stock price really high. So you can make money on a stock before that company even generates any revenue. This is the stock price since it IPO'd. So it looks like it peaked at about $20 but it's come down quite a bit. It's at a really low point. This company has a pretty low beta, 0.78, so the stock moves less than the market. The stock has gone up 24% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 45%. The 52-week low was 186, the high was 630, and the stock is trading below its 50-day and 200-day moving average. On average, about 6 million shares were traded in the past three months. Only about 7% of the shares are held by institutions, and 2.7% of the shares on float or shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 18%, while its industry went up 31%, and the market went up 60%. In 
In the past three years, this stock has really struggled, down 78%, while its industry is up 26% and the market is up 65%. However, in the past 90 days, this stock has outperformed its industry and the market, up 36%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 13%, while its industry grows 19% and the market grows 19%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 47%, whilst industry grows 16% and the market grows 10%. In the past 5 years, their earnings decreased 27%, whilst industry increased 13% and the market increased 12%. In the past year, their earnings increased 24%, its industry decreased 7%, and the market increased 3%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you could have sold at $15,000. But if you're still holding on, you'd be down to $2,500 today. That's an annual loss of 28%. The biggest shareholder is H.C. Wainwright at 7%, then Upsiva at 6.5%. The CEO of the company owns 5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. is 32, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the P.E. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They don't have any sales, so we can't look at the price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. There are 24.1. So investors are paying $24 for $1 book value. And the way you calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And they have 8 million of equity, negative 18 million of tangible equity, since they have 27 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have negative operating income, so they have negative return on invested capital and negative interest coverage ratio. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities 1.7 times. And their current assets are 31 million of cash and 5.4 million of prepaid assets. So the company does seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative 71 million of free cash flow and 15 million of working capital. So they're short 56 million. So they're going to need more debt or equity to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 13 companies in the same industry as Upsiva. And if Upsiva has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in every single category. They are a little better than average in price to book. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 67% discount. It seems like this company is developing some really important drugs that's going to help a lot of women out. A big issue when you invest in a company like this, will Upsiva be able to fund its business? It needs to either take out debt or issue more stock and dilute the current shareholders. It constantly needs funding because there's no revenue coming in. As long as it gets funding, it should be fine. But sometimes the capital markets dry up a bit and companies, especially smaller ones, have difficulty getting funding. Only time will tell. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 1 out of 10, and their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.